everyone, welcome back to John Florio channel. I am Mary and I'm here to talk about John Florio. I have often explained in my past videos that John Florio had many jobs. He worked as translators, writers, teachers, secret agent, ghostwriter, spy, which shows that he had different personalities. He changed behavior according to whom he was talking to. And the story that I'm going to tell today will reveal another shade of his multiple personalities and will reveal his psycho Machiavellian side. Yes, because Florio was involved in a murder. But before we start, if you are new, don't forget to subscribe and help me grow this channel. And now, let's start. When Florio lived with Harry Rose Lay, he was a real factotum for him. He was his servant, his writer, his secretary, writing letters for him. He was his teacher, sharing with Harry his passion for Italian literature, Italian theatre. They didn't have a master-student relationship. They were very close friends. They played at tennis together, they went at theatre together. Florio followed Henry everywhere. And he also got involved into his private affairs. Henry Rosley was very close with the Danvers brothers. The Danvers brothers were Henry and Charles Danvers. Henry was a soldier and like Henry the Earl of Southampton, he was 20 years old. At an early age, he became a page to Sir Philip Sidney, whom he accompanied to the Low Countries and was probably present at the Battle of Zalfen in 1586, where Sidney lost his life. Later he served the Earl of Essex, so there was a double bond between the Earl of Southampton and the Danvers brothers. The Danvers brothers shared lots of hobbies with Henry. They loved literature, Italy, theatre. They were young, rich and beautiful aristocrats and spent a lot of time together. However, in 1594 the Danvers family had a problem with their neighbours, the Long family. The Long family were Southampton's neighbours and they had a house near Teachfield, where Henry lived. Between the Danvers and Long family there was a bitter feud, quarrels, insults, but the hostility reached a violent climax in 1594. Sir John Danvers, the father of Henry and Charles, convicted a servant of C. Walter Long of two robberies, a murder of one of his servant and the injury of another. Lady Elizabeth Danvers, the mother of the two brothers, admitted that the animosity between the two families had become unendurable with the Danvers suffering many insults from the long servants who once, in a pub, threw a beer in the face of her husband. She also stated in a letter to Lord Bagley William Cecil that Henry Long wrote abusive letter to Charles, threatening to kill him. If this quarrel involved the servants of both families, later the three hot-headed young aristocrats decided to settle the matter in a duel. On Friday, October 4th, while Henry Long was having dinner with his friends, the Danvers brothers erupted in a pub. Sir Charles Danvers first walked toward Long to strike him on the chest. He then turned to leave, but found the door locked by Long's friends. Harry Long then drew his sword on Sir Charles, who was wounded in several places of his body. And to save his brother, Sir Harry shot Long on the spot. Harry Long died. 
and Harry and Charles Danvers run away. But on the same night, the hue and cry out against the Danvers reach Teachfield. The day after the murder, the body of Harry Long was examined by 12 people and the report confirmed that Harry died after a mortal wound of a bullet on the left chest. When the mother of the Danvers brothers was interrogated, she first denied everything, but when she realized that everyone knew the truth, she cried that her son killed Harry Long accidentally. But the truth was that Harry Long's death was not accidental, but carefully planned by the Danvers brothers with the help of Henry Rosley and John Florio. One Anthony Johnson, a witness interrogated, revealed that there was some horses exchanged to teach the Abbey the day of the murder. During this period of fly and hiding, servants of both the Danvers and Southampton households carried messages, looked after the horses and the meals. Thomas Dredge, a staple boy of Teachfield, confessed that Southampton's cook help Charles and Harry make dinner. The Danvers stay at Southampton's house for four days, from Saturday, the day after the murder, until Tuesday. And on Sunday, October 6, Harry Rosley celebrated his birthday. While Harry was blowing out 21 candles at Teachfield, his barber, Thomas, brought two shirts to be washed, and one of them was full of blood. The next day, Southampton had dinner with the Danvers brothers and later they left England, escaping to France. In the middle of this fracas, what did John Florio do? While Henry Rosley was hiding Charles and Harry Danvers in his house to arrange horses and sheep to go to France, Lawrence Gross, the sheriff of the town of Southampton, was made notice of the whole account by one Fry, the constable there, who gave him the names of the company suspected of the murder. Gross then decided to do further investigations. But the news quickly reached Teachfield. Harry was warned that the sheriff of Southampton knew that he was involved in this murder and he was ready to interrogate him. So what did Harry Rosley do? He decided to send John Florio to talk with the sheriff, Gross. While a team secured Danvers and hastened their departure, John Florio prevented Gross to do any further investigation. The next day, on Saturday night, while the sheriff was having a relaxing and peaceful walk with his wife at Teachfield, they decided to take a ferry. On that ferry, they were not alone. There was John Florio. He walked toward the sheriff and grabbed him by the jacket and threatened him to cast him overboard, telling him to stop investigating on his friends with many threatening words. The sheriff almost fell off the ferry. He and his wife quickly left the boat and ran away. What happened later? There is no sign that Southampton, for instance, or John Florio were ever interrogated. Gross stopped investigating and Charles and Harry Danvers safely escaped to France, while some of both the Danvers and long servants were hanged after this feud. Undoubtedly, for such a tough and risky job as that of threatening a government official, Southampton made sure to send a bold, unswerving man on nerve. Far from being a flattering page of his career, this case shows Flores' personality and unfolds the intimate nature of his relationship with the Earl of Southampton. I hope that you liked this video on the horrid murder of Harry Long, John Florio, his psycho Machiavellian side, and Harry Rosley. Let me know in the comments what do you think of this strange, incredible story. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and stay resolute. Bye!